Hello everyone and welcome to a little bit of Atomic Pop Chat. Hey, I hope you all had a good weekend, you're having a good week. Hump day, finally, yay. That means we're on the home straight to the weekend. Um, yeah, <laughs> just as a, well not quite as busy as last weekend. Um, I was very lucky to go to a gig on Friday. Um, I was going to see nothing but thieves at Wembley Arena. They were absolutely amazing. Uh, do go check them out. Uh, and then just a busy Saturday uh, in, in London. And then, yeah. So long and short, there was no Sunday lunch. Because <laughs> I was just absolutely worn out. So I thought I'd jump on midweek. Let's have a little atomic pop chat instead. Uh, and yeah, just a few thoughts on what's going on in the world. As ever, you know, it's always Disney, Marvel um star wars you know um they are still um going off a cliff <laughs> should we say or they've hit the bottom and now um yeah everything like kind of falling on top of them <laughs> yeah, i guess um yeah so i guess let's let's uh get into this a little bit uh let me bring this up there we go so yeah <laughs> so unless you've been under a rock obviously the marvels came out and um didn't do so well <laughs> shall we say i mean most of the you know the the pop culture youtube channels have been saying this thing was going to tank hard i think i said it as well a few weeks back um obviously I, i've not seen the film i said i'm, I'm not seeing the film i don't want to see the film so I can't comment whether it's good or bad. I mean, I think there's enough reviews out there and just a handful here. And I have to just, you know, shout out to the Irish Times who has the absolute banger of a headline of the year. The Marvel's review, the Marvel Cinematic Universe disappears up its own black hole. You just cannot top that headline. And this is mainstream media, right? Just, just bear that in mind. Um, yeah, that, uh, the next one was from The Guardian, the Marvel's review, Superheroes uh, to Zeros in Tepid Franchise Edition. And the last one was The New York Times. Now, these are all kind of, uh, you know, uh, papers that get behind this kind of stuff. Um, they very rarely quick criticise anything coming out of Disney. But, you know, The Guardian, we, we saw it starting to happen with um, uh, Diana Destiny and obviously subsequent uh, Ahsoka. Um, New York Times again, you know, these are very left leaning um, uh, papers. And obviously, the Times is a bit, these are, and even they're turning around and going, this was not good. So, um, so, so yeah, I don't think it's a massive surprise that, that anybody who has been, uh, you know, watching this, it's a sequel, you know, nobody wanted or asked for. You had to watch, you know, the shows leading up to this, WandaVision. Um, Miss Marvel, Secret Invasion, but hardly anybody watched or uh, anyway started watching it, basically didn't finish it. And I cut myself on that. I like, didn't watch WandaVision or Miss Marvel at all. Just wasn't interested. Um so yeah, they're in a they're in a world of pain right now. <laughs> um, you know, there's nothing really else on the slate for them. All they've got is some heinous uh, Disney shows coming up with uh, Echo, The Acolyte, um, and another uh, Wish, I think, some, some other animated Pixar thing that I'm really not interested in. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's all bad news for Mr. Iger and gang, and um, as always, uh, zero sympathy, quite frankly. So, you know, what, what I do find quite interesting is that, you know, obviously there's been, as per, not not as hard as we've seen in previous um, releases, but, you know, as usual, there's a bit of a backlash. Initially, like, it's all men's fault. Um, and then the statistics came out that actually more men than women went to see this film. I think it was 61% men. So now it's all like, well, why, why do women hate women? Or why aren't women back in this film? Um... I don't think you know the, the answer is the same as as anybody else because it's not good. <laughs> you know, it's not women hate women. Um, it's a case that you know uh, 
most women, and I include my, you know, well, my eye statement, I like to go see films that are good. And just because there's a female lead or a female director or a female writer doesn't mean I'm going to go see it. And why should I pay my money to go see complete crap? I think it's got absolutely nothing to do with supporting women. If the story's good and the film's good, people will go. Barbie proved that. The women and the turned up for that was it 1.2 million? And it's okay, it wasn't the best film in the world, but it, it wasn't an awful film. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, obviously, the best thing about the Barbie film was actually Ken. I don't think that was their intention, but hey, whatever. I was Ryan Gosling intentionally give us a get a Grammy or something. Uh, some award for he's been nominated for some award for that the I am I am Ken or uh, their song which is brilliant. Um, yeah, so I get really annoyed with this kind of a. It's not men's fault that it's crap, and it's not it's not women hate women. <laughs> Just not going because it's rubbish. Why would I? Yeah, why would I pay hard earned money to go sit in a cinema to watch utter rubbish? just because women are in it. I mean, do me a favor. So um, I think, yeah, just make a good film. <laughs> Both men and women will turn up, strangely enough. Very weird. Uh, doesn't doesn't hurt though, if like Chris Hemsworth in it with no shirt on, but hey, just play him. Um, yeah, so, uh, d you know, following on from the disaster, darling, of uh, the Marvels, Obviously, um, the sort of I think the next film on the release slate was Captain America Four, but this is obviously going to be Black Falcon, Captain America. Um, and like, as it says, it I mean, you know, four years after we last saw him, does anybody care? <laughs> Did anybody watch Falcon and Winter Soldier? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I sat. Yeah, I did, but it, again, wasn't very good. And uh, it's come out based in, in uh, again, this has been pushed back yet again. Um, be again because the, uh, the the screenings have just come back that it's awful. So there's another rumoured or, or five months of, of reshoots, but that's pretty much you're remaking the whole film. So there, Marvel scraps portions of Captain America after negative reactions reportedly pour in. So I think it's a bit more than... Um, scraps portions say five months worth of filming is pretty much the whole film so again that does not bode well for it being any good if because the thing is when they're reshooting they're still not changing the things that need to be changed now you know we don't have a new a new regime at disney we're probably going to get one soon um so so what they're just, they're just going to play around with it and we'll, we'll still just get a load of rubbish at the end of it and they've spent double the budget again on, uh, you know, spending money they just don't have. Um, and it's going to, you know, it's going to take good word of mouth for people to go see this. So I think the opening weekends are going to continue to to go down. But you'll probably see what we saw with um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, that um, the initial week weekend wasn't brilliant, but actually it gained legs and actually, you know, Again, didn't top two, but I think it's the best performing Marvel film we've had in a long time, around the 800 million mark. So I think that's, that, that's going to be the trend going forward for, for Marvel films. Is like, you know, you, you don't have that built-in audience anymore. You've driven them all away. You've called us all names. Um, so is this film's not made for you? Um, pff, nonsense. Um, so yeah, it's, it's only a strong film with word of mouth that's going to get any bums on seats, and even then, you're still not going to get some people back because you say you've just treated your your consumer base, your customers, with contempt. So why should I give you my money, Disney? Um, this also leads into another <laughs> little story. Oh, wrong one, wrong order. Ah, I'm the wrong order. Give it away now. But anyway. Um, uh, the direct, I mean, th this Blade um, <laughs> reboot, remake, whatever you want to call it, has been in production hell, as the drinker calls it, for years now. And it's a shame in the sense that it's great casting. I mean, I loved Wesley Science. Blade is still one of my favourite films. I've got it on 4K. Absolutely love it. And this, this guy's great casting, I think, to replace Wesley Snipes. 
and how the guy is still even involved beggars belief because he has been mucked around no end you know we were reading that the the, the last script um uh, is all women in the forefront or you know life lessons and preaching and he was relegated to um you know supporting act in his own movie because well we haven't seen that from disney before have we <sighs> pretty much every film ever well not ever but in the last uh for phase four and five um the old bait and switch so uh we've now uh, i mean i think they've been through some like four directors god knows how many writers so now the latest director has said Blade will be an R-rated film. Now, obviously, the the previous uh, uh, versions of this this that haven't been made yet. They were all PG thirteen in America, which we don't have here. So I imagine it would be a twelve A here. Um. So I think that in itself is good news. Uh, that we'll get more of a horror, horror element to a vampire story, hopefully. But Blade has got to be the star of his flipping film. <laughs> and it's going to be good. You know, the, the original Blade set a really high bar. I mean, it's like I said, it's a great film. It still stands up today. Um, and this guy really, really deserves a, a, a good film, a good vehicle, and be rewarded for staying with this project so long. Because all they've done is seem to do is done him dirty, to be fair. So, um, yeah, I guess it's continued to watch this space. But... Yeah, everything we're hearing is that, you know, uh, Disney is panicking. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how long, you know, Feige, KK, their minions um, stay in their, their roles. I mean, if they manage to write this out, that's one hell of a feat. I would say kind of, <laughs> I'm not sure respect is the right word, but kudos to, you, to them if they can write this out because, you know, the... They're, they make all the decisions. They're the top of the tree now. Whether they're overstretched or whatever, you know, that, that doesn't stop the accountability stopping with them. You know, when you're the CEO or the head of something, the bucks should stop with you. That's that's the point. That's why you get paid the big bucks <laughs> at the end of the day, you know. That's why we have hierarchies at work. Um, so, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see. You know, whatever they do, it's going to take a while for films to come out that will be in any kind of new mould if they even do that. I mean, I've read some reports that say Disney are just going to double down, surprise, surprise. Um, but then we're also seeing stuff where they're doing reshoots. So it's all a bit bonkers, really, as to, you know, I mean, who knows which way they're going to go. But D Disney never seemed to do the right or the logical thing. So as always, it, we continue to watch this space when it comes to uh, Disney Marvel, Disney, excuse me, Disney Star Wars. Um, and as fans, we just continue not to hold our breath that we'll get anything halfway decent um, anytime soon. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Disney. You're going to need it. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, moving away from from Marvel now. We'll go back to that slide that, 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 that I put them in the wrong order. Surprise, surprise. Um, yeah, so obviously one of my my other faves um, that got completely ruined and trashed and set on fire, and then the ashes got scattered and then blown up and then set on fire again. Doctor Who. So uh, I'd say certainly in the UK, you know, unless you've been living under a rock, you know, it's the 60th anniversary. Obviously, I've been talking about it on this channel. I also have been talking about it on the Facebook channel, um, Dan's channel. And um, he dropped a video on Monday, this Monday, where we were just chatting about how Russell T. Davis has come out and said that Shooty Gat was um, first season will be, sorry, the his season will be renamed season one. And I think a lot of this is sort of driven from it being on Disney Plus and they're not going to have the back catalogue. Um, so, uh, but go check out, I won't, I won't talk about it too much here because I talked about it over there. So go check out um, on the Facebook Type 40 um, for his November <laughs> specials that dropped on Monday. Um, yeah, talking about changing the, uh, the numbering of the seasons. 
So uh, yeah, go go check out what I what I have to say about that. Now, obviously, there's other stuff going on. Uh, just a couple of things here. So again, unless you're living under a rock, we now know what the episodes are called and when they're dropping. We have the Star Beast, followed by why why Wild Blue Yonder, if I could even say the word, and the Giggle. So I think the Wild Blue Yonder um, seems to be, I think, the most intriguing one for people, or the one that seems to be quite a lot of buzz around. I mean, obviously the Giggle with the uh, Celestial Toy Maker. But there's potential, I think, or people are speculating for like sort of cameos and things like that, that the, the Wild Blue Londa could could be the, the big one for that. So, yeah, not long to go now. <laughs> I can't, it's, yeah, it seemed like forever and we've not really had anything from the BBC. Shocker. Um, and uh, obviously over the last few weeks, we're pretty much getting information dropping weekly. And today, in fact, we, I mean, we knew they were going to be colorizing the first ever Dalek episode. This is episode two of the classic era season one, <laughs> which was lovely William Hartnell, and there's a picture of him there. Um, and obviously they're colorizing this episode. They've released a couple of photos. This one is great. The other one is of them in the TARDIS, and Barbara has a basically a, a blouse on. There's basically the pink of my pink on here. I think they might need to dull that down a notch. <laughs> there's a um, there's a yeah, pretty pretty bright. Let's just say. So, uh, but just a couple of stills that we've seen, it looks fantastic. Um, I think, you know, the technology we've got these days is amazing. Um, they're also though, actually um, editing the episode down. Um, obviously there used to be 25 minute episodes um, and overall they've done it. So it's 75 minutes. So that may or may not go down well with some Doctor Who fans, but I think obviously the cost of colorization, I get that. And also they're sort of trying to make it a bit more punchy for modern audiences, <laughs> or even just obviously the way we watch TV now in terms of like streaming. So I kind of get it, but um, I think it'd be, if they've got any sense, what they do is obviously release it on uh, physical media, the edited version and the full colorized version of all the episodes, if they've got any sense, but this is the BBC, so who knows? So, uh, but that's going to be on November 23rd. I think it's on BBC Four. They've got like a bit of an evening of Doctor Who. And after this episode is, is, is aired, they are repeating um, the documentary of how Doctor Who was created. Um, I think it's called Trip Through Space and Time or something like that um it's very very good very good i think it's written by mark gatiss um and it's yeah it's all about um you know uh how doctor who came about um and the sort of fight they had on the hands back then and, and how this show has never sort of really been straightforward <laughs> in terms of you know people love it it has fans but for some reason actually i think back in the day the bbc did love it um and some got it some didn't but it was all about kind of the, the launch of the show and then obviously William Hartnell becoming ill and how do they keep the show going and the, coming up with the idea of regeneration and things like that. So if you're sort of new to Doctor Who or new to New Who, I really recommend you go watch this. And um, it might surprise you that there was like women involved in creating Doctor Who all the way back in the 60s. Verity Lambert was a huge influence on this show. She was a producer. You know, BBC tried to make out that there's never been any, you know, women or people of colour ever involved in Doctor Who until 2016 or post-2016 or Jodie's era or some, some sort of crazy nonsense. But there's some very influential women and writers, people of colour writers involved in early Doctor Who as well. So, um, yeah, go check it out. And just lastly, um, I saw um, as an article and there's a few uh, YouTube channels reporting on this, which is very exciting. As um, Again, for those that don't know, BBC policy back in the day when everything was on film, they either recorded over film or, or videotapes, or they would just throw them out periodically and just chuck them away. Um, so it's met a big, well, most of uh, Patrick Troughton's era is missing. They have the audio, but not necessarily the video, the, the, the video, something went Welsh, video. Um, and uh, a, 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 quite a few of William Hartnell's episodes. Now, over the years, some of these have been found. They've been found in other countries where the film was sent to 
uh, other distributors or other, uh, you know, networks and things to be shown in their own country. I think quite recently, uh, a few years back, some were found in Africa. Um, but apparently there's, there's um, uh, people sort of said that, oh, you know, we have got some of these episodes in, in, in private collections. But um, there's reluctance to, to hand them over to the BBC or make copies because it's still apparently it's still technically theft. So the BBC sort of, uh, said to their employees that they they obviously couldn't take the film, even though they were throwing it out. It was still seen as theft, which I find is a bit bizarre because if you relinquish, if you throw something in the bin or in a skip you're relinquishing your your right to that property surely but i mean i'm not a lawyer i don't know so the bbc are sort of coming out and saying look at, there'd absolutely be amnesty we'd just love to have these things back so um i think it's a case of kind of watch this space and see whether the collectors will come forward or you know provide copies or you know whether they'll just turn up mysteriously in an envelope at the bbc <laughs> who knows but I think, you know, in the 60th year, it's it's just great news and just, you know, what, what fans are absolutely hopeful. It does look like they're predominantly William Hartnell episodes, unfortunately not the Troughton ones. But obviously we are seeing the animations now um, where they had some episodes and now uh, animated um, the missing episodes and completely missing um, uh, stories are now being uh, animated. I quite like them. I find them quite cute, and they kind of remind me of the um, uh, the sort of late seventies, early eighties of uh, you know um, Paddington and King Rollo and those kind of things. But I get to some to some of the fans. That's the problem. They look a bit too childish. They don't look quite you know polished enough. But I, I, I just think there's kind of a charm about them because it is Doctor Who and. Obviously, the given the budgets and the time, they weren't particularly polished anyway, because of you know the, the restrictions they had back then and filming in studio, etc. So personally, I think they go quite well, but I get people, people some people just really don't like them, and that's cool. So yeah, more Doctor Who coming out. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be more uh, announcements and things um, with, with sort of the countdown of a week to go. So um, first one's a week on Saturday. So getting very excited for that one. As I keep saying, just please be good. Just please be good. We shall see. We shall see. So that was it. That's all I kind of wanted to jump on and have a quick chat about. Um, as usual, my you know, one of my favorite subjects, but the subject this is everywhere. Disney imploding and melting. Um, you know, the other studios are all chasing their tails as well. Um, there was a great observations last night over on R and B's channel, Robert Meyer Burnett's channel. Do go check it out. It's some bonkersness going on over at Warner Brothers. So they've met that so a film's been made based on an article that came out in the 90s. Um it apparently is, I think, written by James Gunn um, or partly written by James Gunn. And the whole thing is about Wiley Coyote, you, you know, um, the Looney Tunes is basically suing Acme for all the, you know, all the products that they sent him. And he just always ends up hurt and off a cliff and never gets to catch the Roadrunner. And Rob just read like the, the first like, couple of paragraphs from, from this article back in the 90s. And I was crying with laughter because I could, I could just see it in my head. They were just talking about him being on this, um, <laughs> try to get rid of that, like, on this sled and he cranks it up. And as he's doing cartoons, obviously, like his arms sort of shoot out and his body shoots out, but then he, his bum kind of stays where it is and he sort of eventually catches up. And, you know, and I, I could just visualize it in my head and him just looking at the screen and blinking at us and like, what are these off? It sounds absolutely hilarious. It's kind of done in the vein of, um, um Roger Rabbit. Uh, so you've got live action and obviously Wiley Coyote's animated. Um, and it, it just sounds absolutely hilarious. So apparently it's finished, it costs 70 million dollars. Um, it had high scores, which is something obviously Warner Brothers just doesn't have right now. It was scoring in the 90s from the, the previews. Um and uh, they made this sort of crazy decision that they said, oh, we're, it's done, but we're not going to show it. We're just going to write it off. 
cost 70 million if we write it off we'll get 30 million back makes no sense so there's been quite a, a big backlash to this um and now they seem to be walking this back a bit and there's talks that Amazon and a few others are potentially going to do like screenings to get to gauge audiences um, reviews of this. But I really, really hope that somebody else picks this up. That it's either shown on streaming, but I think it deserves it. It sounds brilliant. It just sounds, you know, exactly what we need right now. It's, it is pitched as a family film. Um, but, you know, just some old fashioned comedy cartoon Wiley Coyote, Roadrunner, Acme I think it's just the kind of film that everybody needs right now <laughs> and apparently you know it has, it has an ending that makes you cry it's hilarious and, and, I, and I'm just sitting there going right so we basically got that so they're putting out the the, uh, the what we all know to be a massive bomb with Aquaman 2 in December right or whenever it's coming out now but whatever it comes out, it is going to bomb so hard. I, I I enjoyed Aquaman. I have no interest in going to see Aquaman 2. I've said on this channel, I'm not going. If, well, she who will not be named, isn't it? Um, plus, it just sounds it just sounds awful. <laughs> the story just sounds awful. So, so they prepared to put out an absolute bomb that costs hundreds of millions of dollars. They put out uh, The Flash which has lost them so much money. They've put out Blue Beetle. Now they've got a film that is finished, that has high audience scores from pre-screenings and are saying, let's just write it off. Given as well that obviously because of the writer's strikes and the actor's strikes, there's a massive gap. What are they going to be releasing in cinemas? All, all of the studios. So they've got this massive gap and you've basically got a film sitting there waiting to go with great reviews. As I said, when it comes to like Disney, you know, making intelligent, um, right decisions just doesn't seem to come naturally to these studio heads. They know nothing about film. They seem to know nothing about um, entertainment. They just look at a spreadsheet or the algorithm says, do this. It's just absolutely crazy. So I'm keeping everything crossed that this film does get released in some capacity. It might be awful, but is it going to be any, any more awful than... Aquaman 2 probably not and it's something different and it's something all the family can go to so fingers crossed but do go check out uh observations on R&B's channel I think it aired last night so I watched it this morning and get the full lowdown of this and it's very funny when they, they're talking it through but uh yeah just a, seems to be another bonkers decision so fingers crossed on that one anyway that's it so as always please like share and subscribe and drop me a comment what do you think about the things i've been chatting about today would you like to see a wily e. coyote film versus acme i think so yeah well let me know do, do you think there's any hope of salvaging marvel or star wars or any of those things do you even care anymore would you like i'd like I don't even want to hear about this anymore, let alone whether there's a future. And are you excited for Doctor Who? Excited as I am with nervous anticipation. And uh, yeah, getting kind of squeak bum time. So do let me know in the comments as always. And I'll be back again soon. So you take care. Have a great rest of the week. Goodbye.